Item number, SCP-616. Object class, Keter. Special containment procedures. SCP-616 is to be kept in sight while grounded. Repair personnel of a clearance level of two or above are allowed to enter the craft and must conduct thorough pre-flight inspections to ascertain that SCP-616 is ready for flight. However, repair personnel are to maintain a distance of at least three meters from SCP-616-1. On flight days, only ordained and believing ministers of an Abrahamic faith with security clearance of level four or above may enter the aircraft and must remain at least 0.94 meters or three feet and one inch from the threshold of SCP-616-1 at all times while the aircraft is grounded. SCP-616-1 should be kept from closing at all costs once activated. This necessitates a monthly manned flight. Failure to keep SCP-616-1 from closing will require initiation of Procedure 600 Shoki. Each flight, seven archbishops, ordained and believing in an Abrahamic faith, must surround SCP-616-1. Prayer directed at SCP-616-1 is to be sustained during the whole duration of the flight, usually three to seven hours. Prayer must be sustained by all able subjects, but once SCP-616-1 is activated, previously established distance restrictions no longer apply. Subjects are in fact encouraged to try to physically stop SCP-616-1 from closing, though extreme caution must be taken to keep any personnel from falling through the threshold, as that will likely result in data expunged. In addition, one Foundation agent trained in flying commercial aircraft is to pilot SCP-616 through a pre-designed flight path and must be able to maintain radio contact and information of events in SCP-616. Under no circumstances is the pilot cleared to approach SCP-616-1 once flight has begun. All personnel should be supplied with any religious paraphernalia they request before flight time. No extraneous personnel are to be present during flight for any reason, as they will likely be killed by SCP-616's activation and provide corpses for reanimation or data expunged. The Roman Catholic Pope, or a similar Abrahamic religious figure, must bless the aircraft in accordance with the appropriate religious ceremony once per full year. The official must report to the Foundation and arrive physically at the containment site at least three days prior to the year elapsing. Failure to do so may result in the door opening, resulting in data expunged. In the unlikely event that any official misses the ceremony, a substitute of equal rank must be on hand to replace him or her. Furthermore, two nuclear devices with a combined yield of megatons are to be armed inside the aircraft at all times. In the event of an XK-class end-of-the-world scenario, or if the door closes during flight, resulting in data expunged, data expunged, or transfers hostile beings in large numbers, these devices are to be detonated if Procedure 600 Shoki cannot be enacted. Description SCP-616 is a prototype Boeing designed by and constructed on 1606-1966 to specifications. Those superficially similar to the Boeing 737, which went into service shortly afterwards, SCP-616's model had various internal alterations, including data expunged. Despite the various alterations, the most important feature of SCP-616 is the center-left emergency door which has been dubbed SCP-616-1. SCP-616-1 is a standard emergency door, though partially covered in extensive markings associated with satanic cults, adhering to SCP-616-1 can be opened without major incident when grounded and leads to the outside of the aircraft, as expected. However, this is discouraged, as nearly all personnel opening and or passing through the door have reported severe anxiety problems and a persistent feeling 
of being watched. Long-term observation or exposure to SCP-616 is not recommended. Observation using any sort of electronic device is satisfactory while SCP-616 is grounded, though some visual anomalies have been recorded, including data expunged. As such, it is advised that personnel known to have a high tolerance to disturbing imagery be assigned to observation duty and work no longer than three consecutive days. All personnel involved in the repairs, observation, operation, or flight of SCP-616 must submit to psychological evaluations after each period of exposure. SCP-616-1 will autonomously open once every 30 days and begin to close. This event can be considered the activation of SCP-616-1. The speed at which SCP-616-1 closes is highly dependent on SCP-616's altitude, velocity, and data expunged. It should be timed so that SCP-616-1 opens in mid-flight, at an altitude of approximately 10,972 meters, and a speed of about 780 kilometers per hour. Failure to properly time this event is catastrophic, since SCP-616-1 closing fully while grounded could affect all life forms within an unknown radius, causing potentially hundreds of data expunged, posing severe threats to population centers, and requiring immediate use of Procedure 600 Shoki. Once SCP-616-1 spontaneously opens, cabin pressure will destabilize as expected, and extreme turbulence is encountered. At various points during the flight, all present personnel may feel as if SCP-616 is quickly falling, though it has been ascertained that SCP-616 remains in relatively stable cruising conditions during all times, including during the times of these events. SCP-616-1's opening may cause certain individuals present to suffer fatal heart attacks, or data expunged. Corpses with an undamaged larynx present within SCP-616 once SCP-616-1 activates seemingly reanimate for the duration of the flight. The corpses remain largely immobile and as such pose no physical threat but are capable of speech. These speaking corpses should be terminated if possible as their speech poses potential psychological dangers as well as enable SCP-616-1's closing via data expunged. The language spoken by these reanimated corpses remains unidentified. Addendum 616-1 The airliner series never went into service, as the various anomalous events surrounding SCP-616's test flights were reported as various design failures. All plans and blueprints have been seized by the Foundation. It is now believed its designs were entirely intentional and done under no external compulsion. Recovered documents from the construction process describe data expunged. Addendum 616-2 On a remote-controlled rover obtained footage from within SCP-616-1. All personnel who viewed this footage directly committed suicide by various means within a two-month period. A security tape of the video with the recording playing did not cause any death, despite containing full sound and color recordings of the footage. It displayed a video of a small child violently being data expunged within a dark red room. All further attempts to observe past the event horizon have yielded similar results, and such expeditions are no longer permitted. Addendum 616-3 Interview logs pertaining to SCP-616 are available in Document Interview 616-AM. Interview 616-AM Partial Log of Interview A Subject was only surviving passenger aboard the flight that brought SCP-616 to the Foundation's attention. Dr. Glass, do you want some water before we continue? Or perhaps something to eat? I know you've had a long day. I keep a few snacks here in my desk if you'd like something. Subject. N no, nothing. Dr. Glass. Alright. Go on then. What happened? 
during takeoff. Subject. Nothing at first. Everyone was excited, you know? Promised us we'd be able to witness data expunged at last, and we believed him. Subject. Then stood up, and we all started singing, and everyone was cheering with excitement when the door flung open. And then it started. Dr. Glass. Go on. Be specific. Subject. The screaming. The screaming started. It was just sort of normal at first. The oxygen masks dropped down as the air started rushing out, and everything started swaying. The lights went out just then, but it wasn't dark. There was light coming from outside, from the door. Dr. Glass. I see. But I understand the flight took place at midnight. Subject. No, no. It wasn't natural light. It was this haze of red, mostly. Colors, but they weren't colors. Everyone started screaming for real when a bunch of people started bleeding and going limp. But they started speaking in unison. They were the chosen, but I wasn't among them. Subject covers face with hands. Subject. They... Oh, I don't know what they were saying. They were chanting it, but people were still screaming. I was screaming, and was yelling something at the open door. And then George got up, walked up to the door, and he jumped. Dr. Glass. He jumped out of the airplane. Subject. No, not out of the airplane. There wasn't an outside anymore. It was... It was paradise, what had been talking about, just like he said. Subject. That's when the angel came. I couldn't see very well. I was in the far back. But suddenly, lots of people got up, and the screaming mostly stopped, and the chanting got louder. And it was still yelling something. And then more angels came. Angels everywhere. Angels! And they ripped, and ripped, and ripped, and harvested. But the harvested kept speaking, kept chanting just like said, and there were hands, so many hands, pushing me towards the door, and an angel ripping, ripping, harvesting around me, and I wanted to get away. I ran towards the door, but subject, subject is seen breathing heavily. Dr. Glass, take it easy. What happened then? Subject, I don't know. When I woke up, I was like this. Subject motions towards legs. Both have been nearly severed at the knees. Dr. Glass. You don't remember anything else. We know why the door didn't close all the way. But do you remember, perhaps, how the plane managed to land safely? Or what became of... Subject. Is in paradise with data expunged. I didn't see it when he went in. But everything was just like he said. He was right. He was right about everything. Dr. Glass. But what about the plane? Nothing in our testing seems to indicate the plane is capable of landing on its own. It was a Boeing engineer, right? Would he have been capable of landing the aircraft? Subject. Is capable of everything. He opened the door to paradise. He'll come back for me one day. I know he will. One day, one day, when I'm worthy, he will. Partial Log of Interview M Subject was on board on the Foundation's fifth manned flight of SCP-616, and the first flight with no occurrence of data expunged. Dr. Sanders Very well, Father. Please continue. Father, I hadn't so much as done an exorcism before, you know? I mean, I believed in evil and I knew what must exist, but I never thought. Dr. Sanders, what happened after the door opened? Father, we kept praying. I had my eyes closed. I was terrified of being sucked out. I felt the fires, the heat and sulfur of hell. The heat was immediate, the smoke almost suffocating. Father clutched his chest and fell over, and I almost went down to see if he was okay but I knew I had to keep praying. The plane started shaking, and I could barely stand up. We were all just standing there, praying so hard. 
Dr. Sanders, what did you see inside the door? Father, nothing. It was just blackness. But there was this sort of light that spilled out, or maybe more like glowing smoke. It's hard to describe. Dr. Sanders, what happened then? Father, well, father started speaking. That's really when I knew everything your people had told me was true. His dead body was possessed. It was speaking in tongues. We just kept standing there, praying we were right, that everything you'd told us was true, and that we could keep this door from closing. But it looked like the door was still closing slowly, and we didn't know how long we were supposed to last. Father, that was when Bishop walked up to the door and started pushing it back. It worked. We all joined him. Dr. Sanders, did that stop the door from closing further? Father, just for a bit, yeah. But then, it started closing again, and we kept pushing back and praying. But it was hard. I was afraid I was going to fall out. The plane was shaking so much, and the lights flickered, and Father was still there on the floor, looking up at us with cold eyes, chanting in some hellish tongue. Father, I'm told the whole thing lasted four hours, but it felt like forever. I don't remember it much, except the falling. Near the end, it felt like the airplane was crashing. I thought we were all going down, that this was the end. It's like when you're going down in a really fast elevator, but worse, everything was shaking and I felt this abyss below me open up, and we were all praying, and I was pushing against the door so hard my hands were bleeding. Father, then it all stopped, just like that. Bishop fell out through the door then, out into the real sky. I think he must have been exhausted, a man his age. He saw the clouds and just smiled and stopped holding on for a second, and just fell. Nothing we could do. We heard the pilot telling us through the PA that we could close the door now, and to take a seat, and put on the oxygen masks, until we landed. Document SCP-616-CP-3 Note Clearance level 4 or higher required. Though the current containment procedures specify the necessity of Abrahamic faith and prayer to keep SCP-616-1 from closing, this necessity is in fact fabricated. After various interviews with a single test run and data expunged, it was determined that the belief in one's ability to keep SCP-616-1 open was ultimately the critical component to being able to accomplish the deed. However, it seems individuals in possession of this fact fare worse than individuals who are not at keeping SCP-616-1 open. Whether this is due to properties of SCP-616-1 or human psychology is unknown. In regards to this problem, Dr. suggested using religion as an abundant and efficient way to harness belief. The current satanic markings were in fact added by the Foundation. The requirement of an Abrahamic leader's blessing, as well as using ordained Abrahamic preachers for the act itself, are all for the benefit of maintaining morale and reinforcing belief. This method has proved successful, as each flight since the first has had fewer casualties and a shorter duration. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-615, Stick Blob, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.